Good morning. Today is the second Sunday of Ordinary Time. Jesus is the gift of God present in the Eucharist. Here we are, Lord. You call us today to be present as a community of faith. We come to do your will. Give us the grace to hear your voice and discern how we can serve you. Open our hearts and minds to your words and feed us from the Eucharistic table. Greetings, we celebrate the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We begin our liturgy by calling to mind our sinfulness and asking the Father's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on all and on, on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading today is a reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep, and the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said, you called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At the time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord, because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for a third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, 
Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling to you. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep. And if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And when Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immortality, but for the Lord. And the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside of the body. But the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple for the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. John was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The, the two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, 
what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard, who heard John and followed Jesus. His, he first found his own brother Simon and told him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter, the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. One morning, a lady uh, said to her husband, you know, darling, I had this dream last night. I dreamed that I received a gift and it was a beautiful diamond necklace. I don't know what that dream could mean. And the husband says, well, later today, I think you're gonna, you're gonna find out what that dream means. So the husband goes off to work and uh, later that afternoon, uh, a FedEx comes, truck comes by and delivers a package to her. And it's a beautifully gift wrap package. And she excitedly opens up the box, opens up the gift, and opens the box and pulls out a book. It was The Meaning of Dreams. <laughs> this, of course, this story comes to mind because in our first reading, where Eli must have thought that uh, Samuel was dreaming. He said, here I am. He said, you called me. I did not call you. Go back to sleep. And finally, at the end, Eli understood that God was calling Samuel. And if we look in our, at the end of our gospel where he said, speak for your servant is listening. And maybe it's a reminder to all of us how important it is that we do take that time to be alone with the Lord. Maybe just, to, just that quiet time to take in how the Lord is speaking to us. It's a prayer for all of us to remember, speak for your servant is listening. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting, amen. We bring our petitions to our Heavenly Father. Our response to the intercessions today will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, may it lead us to a living relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For those men and women called to ministry in the church throughout the world, may they be united in spirit and purpose as they answer, Here I am, Lord. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of all nations, may they recommit themselves as servants of justice, govern with honesty, and may God help guide them to resolve disputes in nonviolent ways. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may we use the gifts we have received from the Spirit to serve those who are in need. May we rejoice in the diversity of ministries by which we build up the kingdom of God. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are hurting and in need of healing, may they return to the source of their faith, Jesus Christ, through his real presence in the Holy Eucharist. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishioners of St. John the Baptist Parish in Linfield and St. Patrick's Parish in Wilton Center, that they would receive abundant blessings during our diocesan anniversary year, we pray, Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in need who benefit from our gifts to the Catholic Ministry's annual appeal, that their lives would be enriched and their burdens lifted, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For those who struggle with pain and illness of body, mind or spirit, and for those who care for them. 
May each new day bring them closer to health and healing. We pray especially for Laura Rosenbeck, Donna Gizzo, Tina Facero, Bob Schiller, Madeline Finger, Mary Chat Grieger, Mari Cleary, Bill Harding, and for all the faithfully departed, that they may rejoice in the heavenly kingdom and be glad in God's steadfast love that endures forever. We pray, Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. And for our needs held in the silence of our hearts, and for those written in the book of petitions in the Eucharistic Chapel, including Dan Prohaska, Father Francis Raj, and George Coca. We pray, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Almighty God, may our prayers increase our love for you and one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Listen, Listen to yeah, you. Yeah, forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let's be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, that whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, for but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you in a joyful celebration we acclaim holy. Holy, 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 Lord God of of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall they may become for us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of the mystery of faith we proclaim,
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, born by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant you peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer a sign of peace to one another. Peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy to enter into your spirit of your love and in your kindness make those who have nourished by this one heavenly bread one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us. Father, Son, 
Holy Spirit. Amen. And to go in peace. Thanks. Hello, everybody. It's Louie, Gracie, Father Bob, saying hello to all. Uh, there's a story about a desk clerk in a, in a hotel. And late at night, he gets a call, and, uh, and he, he calls, and, and a woman is calling, and she says, frantically, she says, I'm on the 10th floor of the hotel here, and my husband, my husband is threatening to jump out the window. And the desk clerk says, uh, well, ma'am, that sounds more like a personal problem to me. And he says, no, no, it's a maintenance problem. I can't get the window open. <laughs> so we're all over here, Louie and Gracie. It's cold outside, it's January. We ask God's blessing on everybody, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. So long, everybody.